Hey, what's going on, everybody? Another week in the hobby, another week in the podcast. Welcome back. How are we doing? Hope everybody's good. All right, so we got a special week, uh, special event coming up. We got the first coronation uh, since 1953 uh, coming up here in about, oh, in about 10 days or so on May 6th. Um, and I got these two sets recently, so I, th I thought it'd be just the perfect time to look at these and kind of learn a little bit about learn a little bit about this since uh, it's going to be something we haven't seen in 70 years or for most of us, uh, you know, we probably haven't seen it in our lifetime. So um, obviously King Charles uh, is going to be crowned um, May the 6th um, inside uh, Westminster Abbey. A uh, couple caveats, a few caveats. Uh, I'm, you know, my, the extent of my knowledge on any of this type of stuff, uh, is the res, you know, comes from maybe two to three podcasts I've listened to. And this, uh, article I have pulled up from, uh, the BBC just on sort of a, like a primer, what you need to know type stuff. So the likelihood that I say something, you know, um, not incredibly smart is is fairly high so forgive me but the point of this is just to look at these cards and kind of learn about this together and just kind of have some fun so not an expert but with that being said let's get into it i got two sets here uh one is partial uh this one on the left um and then i got a i think a full set here on the right um the partial set came from New Zealand. Uh, this full set came from the UK, along with some other cards, tobacco cards that I ordered. So I think we'll just start with the the full set here. What I, what I want to do is, so this was from 1911, Will's uh, Coronation. Um, 50 cards are in the set. Um, and I guess, theoretically... So if Elizabeth was crowned in 1953, um, the coronation of George VI was in 1937. And then before that, before that, I don't know, we'll have to see. Maybe those would be the only two that are not um, reflected in the set. Um, obviously, the, the history of this stuff is just, you know, crazy and so i mean most of the information on the back of these cards should be um fairly informative so here we have the coronation uh, vestments number two and i think with this um there you see the back coronation series number 50 so it says the super tunica is worn over the is a sleeveless jacket okay these robes are worn by the king during the putting on of the crown Okay, so that's the second one. So I think um, what I've been hearing from these podcasts I've been listening to, um, uh, I listened to one with, from Dan Snow uh, of History Hit, and some a lot of this stuff I think has been like either lost or destroyed over time. So here you see the the first vestments. Now with this one, I don't know if this was something that was certain, like specifically like lost or destroyed. Let's look at the back here and see. Uh, so the surcoat of purple velvet is that in which the king is anointed and has openings in such parts, sleeves and back, as are needed for the ceremony. Uh, okay, so I don't know. This article, I'll link to, um, this, uh, BBC sort of primer in the video, um, because they have a ton of great information in here about the history, about like all the specifics, the regalia. I don't see anything in here about the clothing. Um, no, but okay. There's some, the crowns, the coat, okay, the uniforms. No, okay, nothing about that. All right, now this card here, to me, I think this might be sort of my self-defined like chase cards or chase card of this of this set. And actually, this one looks in, to be in really good condition as well. So um, so the anointing spoon um, that I think is there at the bottom. Now, this, I think, is like the only piece um, of regalia that has like survived um, since like the original uh, time period or whatever. So... What's it say there? 
uh, nine inch, and contains the ho holy oil with which the king is anointed. The oil is poured through a hole in the beak into the anointing spoon, which is of silver gilt, uh, seven inches long. The chalice, blah, 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 blah. the chalice, and are carried before the king in the procession by bishops, and afterwards placed on the altar. Now I think so. God, this card looks great for being a hundred years old. By the way, um, okay, centered nicely too. Um, so this, this will be what I'm excited to see, um, during the coronation. I want to see that spoon, um, cause this has got to be, let me check the article here. Um, okay. So it's 26.7 centimeters long, made of silver gilt and pearls, believed to date from the 12th century. So interesting, um, it said, it said the, imp, okay. The coronation spoon is much older, having survived Oliver Cromwell's destruction of the regalia after the English Civil War. So the ampula, ampula, so that's like that bird looking thing, um, made of gold in 1661. And then the spoon, um, obviously quite a bit older, so potentially about a th almost a thousand years old. Interesting. So that'll be, I think that'll be one of the highlights of the, of the coronation for me is, and I'm sure they'll talk about that quite a bit on the, on TV, that spoon and just how old it is. And so I'm going to set that one aside. I think that's going to be sort of my, one of my chase cards that I'm potentially get graded. All right. Um, let's see here. Now we've got the, uh, Coronation Bible and Swords. Uh, presented, prepared. Okay. Pretty cool. All right. So here's Coronation Regalia number one. So let's see if this was one of the ones that was destroyed or whatever. Okay, St. Edward's staff, uh, carried before the king. Doesn't say on here. Let me check. All right. Let's see. Yeah, I think that one, I think that one must be like gone. Let's see here what the next one is. Cause this is the one I see on the BBC article, this orb. So this one, it says, um, made for Charles II in 1661 and used in coronation since. Um, Hollow gold globe with band of precious gems and pearls. Scepter with cross represents kingly power and justice. Okay. So that, where is the? Interesting. The orb or mound is of gold ornamented with jewels. On the top is a large amethyst surmounted by a jeweled cross. It is all an emblem of sovereignty and is handed to the king before the crowning. The sword of state has a guard hill and pommel of gilt metal. Okay, that's cool. This one's a little dusted up though, um, condition wise. Okay. All right, so coronation regalia three. So this is interesting. All right, so this is made in, this is St. Edward's crown, made in 1661, solid gold frame, set with rubies, amethysts, sapphires, garnet, topazes. Six, mar six monarchs have worn the crown in the past 360 years. It weighs five pounds, damn. Um, that's pretty sick. So we should, I guess, assume we should be seeing this on, on May 6th. St. Edward's crown, the official crown of England, was made in 1662 to replace a historic crown of the confessor destroyed by Cromwell's orders in 1649. Okay, so 
was that was that that other one um the royal scepter or scepter with the cross of gold is two foot or the king's right hand so okay so this is so another thing we should see during the actual coronation is this is this crown here that'd be cool um all right now those the, i think those were kind of some of the most interesting cards to me was the regalia um especially that spoon that just the historical context of that seems interesting um state trumpeters now we can kind of go a little faster through some of these uh fanfare these officer yeah we're not i mean if i read every one of these we'll never finish so we'll just kind of appreciate the art a little bit and i'll if i see something super interesting we'll go more into it uh the champion's armor this is something I heard about in the podcast that was kind of interesting. And I don't think there's reference to it in the article on the BBC, but let's see what it says on the back. Um, the suit was made for Sir Christopher Hatton in 1585. It is of purple steel with etched and gilded decorations. It figured at the coronation of George I and in 1877 at the sale. Uh, no, I can't remember what they said on that, but it was, uh, I assume it's, you know, kind of that's super cool though love the art on that one <laughs> all right uh got the chair there there that wooden chair uh there's a card of that i'm really interested in as well so here we've got coronation of richard the second let's see when this was uh, 1377 at Westminster was the first occasion of a coronation progress through London, okay. After the ceremony, the young king was carried to the palace on the shoulders of knights being oppressed with fatigue and long fasting. Dude was tired. All right. Uh, this is pretty sweet. Loosing the horses at the coronation of Edward I. 1274. All right. Here we've got Henry the third. Let's see what his deal was. Uh, 10 years of age when succeeded his father, King John, crowned twice. His first coronation took place at Gloucester, Westminster being in the hands of the friend. Okay. October 28, 1216, and finally, uh, okay. All right, loss of crown jewels in the wash. Well, that's no good. What in the world are we doing? Uh, while upon expedition, da, 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 King John arrived at the south side of the water. Da, 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 da. Although the king escaped, his baggage, including the crown jewels, was lost, and many of his followers drowned. Gee, Merry Christmas. Okay, that's very unfortunate. All right, Coronation of John. Beautiful color on that one. Eleven ninety nine. Okay. Like that one. Richard the First. Is this the one where they eleven eighty nine? Is this where they first used that spoon? I don't know why I'm so fascinated by that spoon. Um Another interesting part about that spoon and like the actual anointing, it says a canopy may be held over the chair to conceal the king from view because this is considered to be the most sacred part of the service. On one of those podcasts I was listening to, they said that they may actually do that a little differently and have it like sort of like either see-through or visible in a way that you can actually see um, King Charles being anointed, which I assume would be like the first time that's happened. So that's another thing to kind of look out for um, if you are watching uh, the ceremony. Where I want to know, I want to know um, who first was anointed with that spoon. Um, 
and I can't find it. Okay. We'll try to figure that out later. All right, next up, um, Harold. Cool color there. He looks quite a bit older. Uh, the last of the January 1066. Only rained for nine months, it says. Okay. All right. Here we've got Legend of the Confessor's Ring. What is this? So, 13th century writer relates that King Edward was met by a fair old man who asking, you know, ring, you know. Okay. Uh, this one's pretty bright. Uh, the reason I bought this set was mostly the color and the artwork just really uh, commanded my attention. Coronation of Edward the Confessor. You can see there's really beautifully done. 1043. If you want to look at these yourself um, online, I mean, there's definitely, you know, a couple hundred listings on eBay for various cards and sets and whatnot. Some graded, some raw. Um, these sets, I think, you know, I spent about probably $15 on. Um, the election of Alfred the Great, 866. But um, condition, this set looks like it's in great condition. Coronation of Charles the First. Sixteen twenty six. Postponed on account of the plague. All right. Okay. Uh, Coronation of James. Information on the back is super interesting too to me, especially right now, just because. You know, coming up on this this event, something we haven't I've never seen, and I'm just really fascinated by these types of things. So, um, obviously, this will be the first time. You know, obviously, tel televised events were much different in 1953 when Elizabeth was um, crowned. So it'll be interesting just to see what the reaction is to all this. I mean, there's you know tons of controversy as well within the within the you know surrounding the event and such for various reasons and. Um, so yeah, it just, it feels interesting to connect back, you know, connect to all this in, in terms of history and the bigger picture and such. So, um, all right. Coronation of Queen Elizabeth, uh, 1559. Okay. Cool. And having these, you know, hundred year old cards and like literally just learning about some of this stuff via, via these actual trading cards right now is interesting as well. Uh, I definitely feel a little more um, engaged in the event when I'm, you know, I'll probably wake up super early and, and watch it here from the States. Um, I don't know specifically what time. I would assume it's going to be super early in the morning or whatever, but Henry the Seventh. Okay. Fourteen eighty five. Beautiful cards, really, really are. Edward the Fifth procession through London. Okay. Died fourteen eighty three. Uh, I think this was okay. So Edward the Fourth died April. 9th, 1483, on the following May 4th, his eldest son, Edward V, was conducted with every mark of loyalty through London by his uncle Richard, Duke of Gloucester. He was lodged in the tower, and preparations for his coronation were in progress when Richard seized the crown and had his nephew murdered. My God. All right. This is different times. Um, Henry the Sixth.
got Banquet, Henry V. Some of these are kind of off center on the back. George the fourth. Queen Carolyn refused entrance to the Abbey. George the second. George the first. William the third and Mary the second. James the second. That wood chair is pretty significant. Um, attempted theft of regalia. What are these guys doing? The notorious Colonel Blood was an officer in the parliamentary army. Disguised as a clergyman, he made friends with the keeper of the jewels who admitted him with three others to the jewel room. After gagging and stabbing the keeper, they made off with the crown and were ultimately caught and most of the jewels were restored. Okay. Charles II. Here's that wood chair again. That's another thing I'm stoked to see. All right, now we're getting to that chair. Um, Cromwell. The event was celebrated on June 26, 1657 with all the splendor customary at a coronation. Cromwell seated in St. Edward's chair was presented a Bible by the speaker after the oath had been taken and the heralds read their proclamation and the spectators shouted, long live his highness, God save the Lord protector. Now let's talk about that chair. Um, all right, where's that chair? Uh, okay, St. Edward's chair or coronation chair. This would probably be one of the other chase cards for me. This one looks sharp, that's good. Um, this would be like one of the ones I would get graded, I think. Made in 1300, used in coronations at Westminster Abbey. So there's some graffiti on it, like over the years, once covered, once covered in gold leaf decoration. The stone of destiny is placed below the chair. Uh, there you see, like right there. Um, lions added later and replaced in 1727. Okay. So it's about seven foot tall. Um, it was originally made by order of England's King Edward I to enclose the Stone of Destiny, which had been taken from the near Scone in Scotland. The stone is an ancient symbol of Scotland's monarchy and was returned to Scotland in 1996, but is due to be transferred back to London for use in the service. During the coronation, the oak chair is placed in the center of historic medieval mosaic floor known as the Cosmati Pavement in front of and facing the high altar to emphasize the religious nature of the ceremony. Okay, so, yeah, this is sick. I like this chair. Um, the chair in which all our sovereigns since Edward I have been consecrated has a wonderful history. To the bottom of the chair is fixed the coronation stone of Scone, also called the Leah Fail, Stone of Destiny, which legend claims that on 
which legend claims to be that on which Jacob slept. It was captured and sent to Westminster in 1296. All right, so that'd be kind of the other. These two items uh, are what I'm really looking forward to seeing um, and hearing people, hearing the uh, presenters talk about. So if you're watching, uh, look out for look out for those. Um, it should be interesting to see Charles. Uh, his interaction with those. So, all right, then we got Jerusalem Chamber and Westminster Abbey. Here uh, you see the chair again. Um, this is the Coronation Theater in Westminster Abbey. So that's kind of how it'll be situated. Um, there's a really good picture of this on that BBC article as well. Again, I'll try to link that. Um, here we've got King George V. Here we've got claiming the date of coronation, proclaiming accession of George V. Oops. Uh, coronation of Edward VIII, proclaiming the date of coronation in 1901. Uh, coronation of Queen Victoria. That's cool art there. See the crown. I like it when you can see the, the regalia in the car as well. All right, and then the last one here. William and Adelaide. All right. So I hope that kind of, you know, if you are interested in this type of stuff like I am, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a jolt as far as, um, you know, a little bit of connection uh, to the history of, of these types of things. Cool, cool to do this through trading cards, cool to do this through collecting. Um, these two cards are really uh, it for me. Um, these are the two I'd probably um, get slabbed eventually. And that's something I'll probably look to do not anytime soon, just for collecting. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it, just the history of it all, uh, learning about it, all that type of thing. So yeah, hope everybody checks it out. Well, I don't really, you know, do what you want, but um but yeah, go check out these cards too. They're pretty cool. And like I said, you should be able to pick these sets up pretty pretty cheap or even just small lots of 10 or 20 cards for just a few dollars if it's something you're interested in. So, all right, hope everybody's doing well. Take care of yourselves. Come back next week. We'll do it again later.